So we can have not only uh, stretches and compressions in horizontal and vertical or translations where we move things left and right, but we can also reflect across the X or the Y axis. So that's the last type of uh, transformations that I'm going to talk to you about. So this one right here, for example, we have uh, Y equals, uh, let's say we have something like negative F of X. So if we throw a negative in front, that means a reflection across the x-axis. Oops, that's a really bad spelling here. So a reflection across the x-axis. So what that means is that if I had some sort of graph, it doesn't matter what it looked like, let's say it was, um, I don't know, some graph that did something like this, let's say. If I did negative f of x, so if this was f of x, whoops, this is x, this is y. If I did negative f of x, then it would look like this. I would sort of, maybe I'll make it green. It would look like this. That would be negative f of x. So it takes everything, this is like a mirror then, so everything above becomes below. So in this example here, sketch the graph of y equals negative x squared. That's then fairly straightforward. All we have to do then is think about our parent function. So in this case, our parent function is x squared. We all know what that looks like. I'm going to draw it as a dotted line, as I've been doing before. So this is my parent function, x squared. But this negative in front means take this and reflect it across this axis. So this is like a mirror. That means then everything over here becomes down here. So it goes like this. Okay, so this right here is negative x squared, this graph here. Some people talk about, you know, whether parabolas are happy or sad, right? Because you can imagine sort of eyes here. So if the parabola is happy, it's because it's got a plus something in front of it, and it's sad if it has a minus. Now you see where that came from, right? It's actually just because we have a reflection. This just says take your x squared and if you throw a negative in front of it, it just means take this graph and reflect it. That's all it means. I guess you can have happy or sad parabolas, so to speak. Um, but this works for any graph. It doesn't matter what it is, right? It could be some square root like this. It could be some weird looking function. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you're stretching, uh, sorry, you're reflecting across the x-axis. Now we can also have something like this, y equals, and uh, this time we can actually say a reflection across the y-axis. So maybe uh, that's done like this, f of negative x. So that's a reflection across the y-axis. So again, what this does is it takes something and flips it. Now some graphs don't look very exciting and some do. So for example, what if I gave you something like, um, I don't know, some weird triangular graph. Maybe it's something that goes like this. You know, this could be a graph. Uh, it has a weird equation, I'm sure. But if this right here is f of x, then if I want to draw what it looks like if I reflect it across the y-axis, that means this piece over here would sort of get flipped and put over here, so it would be like this. And this piece over here would get flipped and put over here. So it turns out this would be f of negative x. Now some graphs don't look very exciting if you, if you reflect them across. So it turns out, for example, uh, the most boring graph ever to reflect across the y-axis is x squared. Check this out. I have x squared. And what I do is, let's say I want to flip it across the y-axis. Well, this piece goes over here. This piece goes over here. Guess what? It looks the same. So this is actually really boring to do. Uh, but some graphs do that. I mean, some graphs, I'm just trying to draw that there's some green as well as the black here. So that's also f of negative x. But it's also f of x. Right? So that both of them are actually here in this case. So that was boring. This one was more exciting. And here comes an example, then sketch the graph of y equals square root of negative x. Hopefully you see then what to do. I can just take my, oops, I better be consistent at least. So I take my x and my y, and I think about my parent function. This looks like a square root of something. So I'm gonna draw what the square root of x looks like. That's this, this is what square root of, uh, oops, what I better do is, I'll just delete that. 
So I'm going to make this black. So this right here is my parent function, square root of x. But of course I want to reflect it across the y-axis. So what happens then, well, it's like this becomes a mirror. So that means it actually goes like this. Almost like it's like a little bird. At least that's how I used to draw birds when I was in grade three. Uh, well, I suppose I'm not really much better. But uh, this right here is a reflection. So do you see how you can take lots of different graphs, and as long as you understand the parent function, you can do all sorts of cool stuff, like translating things, like stretching them and squishing them, or even reflecting them. So those are actually quite useful, because then you don't always have to use your calculator to figure out what graphs look like. As long as you have an idea what it starts out as, you can always just pick it up and move it and stretch it, squish it, reflect it, anything you feel like.